Hi, Red Hat developers. This is Jason with the Red Hat Developers Program here at two, uh, Summit 2017 at the Dev Zone doing lightning talks. This morning we have John Osborne from Red Hat. He's going to be talking about offloading JEE sessions. Hi, everyone. My name is John Osborne. I'm here with Red Hat. I'm a senior developer advocate and I'm going to cover uh, offloading JEE sessions today. So, a lot of customers are using technologies like JBoss DAP, um, Tomcat, and they're running traditional JEE apps. But one of the problems that they have when they move into a more modern platform like OpenShift is that they want to do things like rolling updates where they have a new application that gets deployed and their code goes through some sort of CI CD pipeline and then automated um, into OpenShift, for, for instance. But if you're running a traditional JEE app, which, which stores stateful data, this is actually really difficult to do because uh, the data is inside the application, so you can't just take it down right away. So one of the things that we do is, for customers is we help them set up a JBoss Data Grid. Now, JBoss Data Grid is an in-memory distributed cache and can do a lot of things, but one of the things that does out of the box really nicely is offload the JE sessions into a JBoss EAP. So this, this session will be a, a quick crash course into how to do that. So I'll just give a, a real quick background. JBoss Data Grid is an in-memory distributed store. All the data it stores is in memory. It can actually uh, persist to disk automatically if you want to, but traditionally it keeps the data in memory and it makes redundant copies of that data so you can survive uh, failover and, and server crashes and so forth. And it scales elast elastically. So uh, if I have too much information in memory, I can easily scale on the back end and I don't have to worry about that um, necessarily at the application level. And the way it works is that it, it uses a uh, distribution method where some of the data gets stored on each node and then redundant copies of that data get stored on different nodes. And if uh, a node were to go down, well then that's fine, it'll just spin up a new node and then it'll uh, do what's called we call a straight uh, state transfer where existing copies of the data that are in memory on other nodes will actually transfer to the new node and it'll kind of do this seamless load balancing thing for you. Now you can write apps that, uh, that integrate with JBoss Data Grid. It's very easy to do. And it integrates with a lot of new technologies like Apache Spark, um, big data technologies. Um, it's a really uh, robust technology that we have at Red Hat that's been around for quite some time. But if you're using it as to offload JE sessions, this comes right out of the box and there's actually no code changes required. Um, and just one more thing about it, we also do have what's called near caching, which is you actually have a cache of your cache. So you have something that doesn't need to go over the wire at all. It keeps uh, items of, that, uh, of, of your data set locally within the same JVM as your application or the same machine as your application uh, for even faster load times. So on OpenShift, what this would look, would, would look like is if you go into the OpenShift uh, service catalog, you can quickly spin up JBoss Data Grid instances. They automatically find each other and cluster to each other. And they'll be spread, spread out across um, in different containers across multiple nodes. Now those nodes can be you know, bare metal, they can be OpenStack, uh, virtual machines, or public cloud, doesn't, doesn't really matter to JBoss Data Grid. They'll just evenly disperse throughout the cluster. Now I mentioned this is really seamless integration for EAP, so, uh, and that's what this talk is all about, is how to do this. So I can configure JBoss Data Grid as a store for EAP, and there's several benefits um, to, doing the, to doing it this way. The first is that I enable rolling updates of EAP. So if I have um, EAP sessions and they all have stateful data, well, if I'm storing the state somewhere else, I essentially have a stateless JE app and I can quickly take down that application without having to worry about losing data. So that's really the, the main benefit. But by doing so, it's going to accelerate your CI CD because I can now quickly create um, development pipelines and roll out new features um, within my code and I don't have to worry about you know, where the state of my data is going. I also reduce the re uh, resource requirements of EAP. So if you're storing JE sessions, you have to worry about that throughout your testing um, for, for your EAP sizing, things like um, your heap size, your, max heap, your min max heap size, you know, all those things, CPU requirements. You'd have to worry about how many sessions and how large those sessions would be when you actually size out your EAP application. 
if you offload into DataGrid, DataGrid's not only going to handle that for you, but it can scale elastically. So if you end up needing more sessions that are larger, you don't have to necessarily worry about um, you know, testing all that out because data, JBoss DataGrid's an elastic, uh, scalable sc store in the back end. So when you, go to, when you go to size out your EAP apps, you actually only need to worry about how much your application threads and CPUs are actually going to use locally and not have to worry about um, all the sessions. One thing that's really nice about this as well is you can actually seamlessly um, fail over across data centers. So JBoss Data Grid has a built-in feature where if you have a cluster of sessions or of any data really, it can automatically fail over that to another cluster that's running um, somewhere else in, a, in another public cloud or on another uh, private data center. And this is really important because the way a lot of customers do this now is they use technologies like uh, database replication or SAN replication, and those are very expensive, and this is something that comes out of the box and has been proven by a lot of customers. And you do have that built-in elasticity, but the thing I like the most is the no-code changes. So I don't, have to, I don't have to code my application for this. This is something that I just press a button and rolls out. So how do I do this? So the first thing, there's really three main steps, and it's very easy. So the first thing is to configure EAP uh, the InfiniSpan module that comes with the EAP as a remote cache. So this will tell uh, the EAP um, settings that you're basically storing the cache data somewhere else. And this is just a quick example of what this configuration would look like. Um, it's not complete, so it'll be, it looks good on a slide, but this is essentially what you're doing, configuring the EAP module to look somewhere else. Second is you're telling EAP this, the specific connections of where to look. So if this was in my standalone XML or in my domain XML, I just open up this, uh, this one setting and I tell it where the JBoss data grid servers are. So when I'm in running in OpenShift, you know, you would see the, the data grid servers plus the project name, service cluster local, you know, normally, normal service discovery, uh, host name and port information here. Finally, uh, you just point your application to your cache. So all you have to do is open up your application, JBoss Web XML, and just tell it what the cache information it is and the, and the type of uh, data you're storing there, so that's your session app. So very easy to do, and that's pretty much it. At the end of all that, you'll have something that looks like this, right? So you'll have your, uh, your EAP application, and if you want to spin up a new instance, that's totally fine, it just spins up. OpenShift will now start um, round robining or load balancing between your new EAP apps, and all the data is stored in data grids, so you don't have to necessarily worry or care about the implementation details of where that, all that session data is stored. And it's all in memory, so it's very fast. So I hope that gave you a quick crash course today onto uh, offloading your JE sessions and JBoss Data Grid on OpenShift. Again, my name is John Osborne. I'm a senior developer at Red Hat. Uh, enjoy Red Hat Summit. Thank you.